So I'll put it in here, and I'll call it GC for Grand Canyon. Save. And then it's going to start aligning. Now, there's a progress bar down here. From 0 to 50%, that progress bar is talking about alignment. When it gets to 50%, they're totally aligned. And from 50% on, the progress bar is about blending. It's about uh, actually doing frequency blending, multi-frequency blending, to make sure that the images blend into each other as smoothly as possible. It's already at 2%, 3%, counting up pretty quickly. But since we're not blending, remember we chose an option to be in draft mode so that we're not blending. Once it gets to 50%, we're going to be just about done. And it's going to go through the rest from 50 to 100% really rapidly. So for a 12-image picture like this, it's not very many pictures. We know approximately their relative positions. It's going to go pretty fast. And what it's really doing right now is it's kind of neat. It's figuring out what part of the sphere these images lie on. After all, all these pictures we're taking with a gigapen. So they're part of a sphere. They're some kind of subsphere. And it's trying to figure out what the focal length is to those images, sort of how far away they are from the camera. Once this process is done, it displays on the computer screen the entire panorama all stitched. And once we see that entire panorama on the screen, it's a great time to look at that panorama, investigate it, see if we like the way it looks. Um, if we like the way it looks, then the next step, assuming it's 50 gigapixels or more, is that you can directly upload it to gigapan.org, assuming you have a, a login and a password that you've already set up for yourself there. So now it's about to render this entire image on the screen. So there we are. There's my bookcase on screen. I'll zoom in. And of course, I'll go look at the Isaac Asimov book here. I don't even know which one it is. It's gold. One thing you'll notice is on this viewer, when I zoom in, it takes it a while to swap in the higher resolution images. But there it goes. It did it. It goes a little faster than that once you upload to the website. Now, before I go upload, I'm going to exit out and show you something else that's kind of cool. I'm going to exit out. And notice that uh, in the lesson folder that we had, there's now two new files, gc.data and gc.gigapan. Those two together are the key to the gigapan that's been created. gc.gigapan is like the description file that describes everything about that gigapan. gc.data is where the image pyramid resides. So in there, there's a whole lot of folders and images. I'm going to double click on gc.gigapan to show you that double clicking on the .gigapan file opens up the stitcher and allows you to locally on your own computer see your panorama again. And that's pretty useful. So we can always do that to see the panorama again. And then last but not least, to upload, you can click the Upload tab or you can click the Upload button. Name your Gigapan, my bookcase. You can enter your username and your password. And then you can hit Upload. And assuming you're on an internet connection, and assuming that the picture is more than 50 megapixels, it'll upload it. Now, uh, this is one perfectly good way to upload. And one last thing to just let you know is once you've got this panorama, you could export it to a TIFF right here on your computer. So File Export to TIFF allows you to take that thing and make it a one single TIFF file rather than an image pyramid on your computer. It generates that TIFF file from the image pyramid, but there's one major constraint. I believe the limit on a TIFF file size is 2 uh, gigapixels. So if you have a really big panorama, like two 250 pictures or 300 pictures, you can't get a single file on your computer. You have to use the image pyramid, and you need to be able to upload that directly to gigapan.org instead. The reason you might want one big file on your computer is because then you can go to Photoshop, and you can make changes to it. You could crop it. You could play with it. And then you could actually upload that using the gigapan uploader directly to the gigapan.org website as well. Good luck.